welcome for the next lecture vermicompost quality and marketing so we discussed uh, last lecture about the production technology how we can produce vermicompost in the farm levels are the uh, small farmers or the marginal farmers they can use that the farm resources and they can convert the farm resources suitably to organic fertilizers uh, um, by following the technology as you discussed uh, making the some structures the um, bed structures and using the waste materials and the mix and also if available we can add the natural minerals and the um, biological uh, sources so that we can enhance the uh, vermicompost quality by making the enriched vermicompost. So, uh, so this lecture we will be discussing about the quality of the vermicompost huh, how we can go for the uh, marketing of the vermicompost. So, if you see the uh, quality uh, we, we uh, judge the quality in three categories one is the physical characteristic of the vermicompost and second is your the chemical characteristic of the vermicompost and third one is the biological uh, properties of biological characteristic. If you see because uh, for a uh, crop growth and development for providing the, uh, the soil environment that is suitable for the better uptake of nutrients, better uptake of waters and to have a good rhizosphere. So, that is a uh, population of microbes uh, uh, in the soils. So, we need to maintain the soil, the three properties of soil, the physical properties, chemical properties and biological properties. And the physical properties though uh, they, they helps in the nutrient uptake pattern of the crops. Though they do not supply the nutrient to the crops, the nutrient supply based on the chemical properties of the characteristic of the soils, but the physical properties helps in the as a facilitator for the nutrient release and the nutrient uptake by the crops. And the biological properties like enzyme activity or the microbial activity, they help in the better nutrient mobilizations or mineralizations and the uptake by the crop. So, if you see the vermicompost, we jog the uh, physical uh, like soil the physical characteristic of vermicompost bulk density and the porosity that indicates the, the um, water holding capacity because if you are the vermicompost has the low bulk density as compared to the um, soil even because uh, so that if you add the vermicompost soils so that decreases bulk density. So, lowering bulk density means that in the higher porosity the porosity is higher means the micro pores are the higher micro pores water holding pores that increases the water holding capacity of the soil and the particle size distribution this that is for the nutrient uh, release and the um, uptake by the crops and the moisture content uh, depends upon the, the vermicompost or the physical so moisture content how much moisture because vermicompost is a live thing. So, the, it contains many microbes. So, this has to have the uh, moisture content and the aerations for the proper growth uh, of the microbes in the vermicompost. So, the physical characteristic see chemical properties the pH of the vermicompost cation exchange capacity or the ion exchange capacity that has so, so the buffering capacity of the, uh, the materials. The cation exchange capacity means the nutrient release pattern, how you can uh, the nutrient can come to the exchange sites and can be available for the crops that indicates cation exchange capacity of the material. Electrical conductivity that is salt concentration, CN ratio carbon nitrogen ratio of this compost total carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and more importantly the uh, ammonical nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen are the plant takes nutrient in the um, two forms one is ammonical nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen most of the plant the crops they prefer to have the nitrate nitrogen, but few crops uh, they take like rice they prefer to have the ammonium nitrogen uh, crops. So, we see the how much the availability of ammonical nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen in the vermicompost and also the secondary nutrients like calcium, magnesium, sulfur and the micronutrient contents in the vermicompost. Biological properties the enzyme activity and the microbial community that as you discussed the urease activity, phosphatase activity. So, these are the enzymes present in the vermicompost and the microbial counts beneficial microbes many beneficial microbes are then vermicompost and their populations that makes the, the entire the vermicompost the organic fertilizer is a healthy and is a better use for, um, for the application the field for the crop uptake. And you see the contents you can see the physical proper chemical properties uh, of the vermicompost uh, organic carbon content should be around 20 to 25 percent, pore space or the porosity around 70 percent, moisture content of vermicompost should be around 30 percent or this at least higher, not less than 30 percent should be more than 30 percent, pH in the neutral range 6.5 to 7.5, cotton exchange capacity 50 to 100 milli equivalent per 100 gram of the vermi, sorry, uh, vermicompost. Um, then the electrical conductivity uh, uh, solution that is less than 1 decisiumen per meter, 
total nitrogen content uh, should be uh, should not be less than 1 percent should be more than 1 percent and it should increase up to 3 or maybe can go up to 4 percent total N content. So, that we can uh, minimize the use of chemical fertilizer so that you can meet the because nitrogen is the nutrient that are the phosphorus finally potash that leads to increasing the growth or increasing yield of the crop. If it is the biomass increase that comes from the major nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potash. So, we need to have the vermicompost that is in NPK so that we should not sacrifice the yield. If you think, think of the quality, quality is most regulated by the micronutrients and the quantity of the productions are the biomass that is regulated by the macronutrients. So, nitrogen should be around 1 or be, you may 3 percent or it can be more than you can so higher it should be should not be less than 1 percent should be definitely more than 1 percent. It can increase to 4 and 5 percent that is also good uh, good compost. CN ratio 10 to 20 is to 1 and total phosphorus uh, in the potash should be higher than 0.7 percent and calcium and magnesium uh, should be calcium should be higher than 1 percent magnesium higher than 0 0.5 percent ammonium nitrogen so should be more than 300 ppm and nitrate nitrogen around 120 ppm. So, these are the uh, quality the normal vermicompost as you see. So, these are the qualities of the vermicompost that we have produced from our farm. So, uh, that we see these are the uh, deep, uh, qualities of the vermicompost. So, if you compare the vermicompost of the conventional vermicompost and the enriched vermicompost, this data is uh, developed from our own experiment from uh, from the research class work. Uh, so, this is the chemical properties and the, uh, the conventional vermicompost, microbial enriched vermicompost and rock minerals enriched vermicompost. So, you see the total nitrogen, total phosphorus, total potash, total calcium, total magnesium content because this is organic materials. So, we consider as a total content. So, later on is because as microbes are present once applied to soils. So, in a, because so vermicompost has a high residual effects unlike the chemical fertilizers. So, where the uh, the nutrients are available for the short periods and they are the because the, the very fast mineralization in case of chemical fertilizer, but the vermicompost is slow mineralization it takes long time. So, total nitrogen this can be available for lo for longer periods and it has a if you if you go for the cropping systems when you apply nutrient management cropping systems. So, if you are using the organic fertilizer like vermicompost we should see the residual effect of the vermicompost. So, that the crops in sequence the nutrient management should be taken care and the uh, uh, to have a better productions with the minimum uh, cost of inputs. Uh, for the conventional vermicompost you see the total nitrogen is 1.3 to uh, 1.5 percent. If you go for the enrichment with the microbes the uh, nitrogen content increase 1.8 to 2.4 percent, uh, but uh, only rock enriched uh, it does not have any influence on the uh, nitrogen content that remains almost same 1.4 to 1.5 percent. But microbial enrichment using your ozone vector crococom or the different microbes, uh, uh, microbes so they increase the they have a they, they increase the rate, rate of mineralization and the the N content of the vermicompost from 1.2 to or 2.4 percent. Similarly, if you go for the phosphorus, uh, total phosphorus 0 0.8 to 1 percent for this conventional vermicompost uh, with microbial enrichment this uh, 0 0.9 to 1.3, uh, whereas if you go for the uh, rock enriched, rock mineral enriched, so there is a significant improvement in phosphorus current content 2.9 to 3.5 percent. So, if you see the potash uh, for the conventional vermicompost this 1.0 to 1.1 percent uh, with the microbial enrichment so 1.1 to 1.6 small improvement whereas, if you go for the rock mineral enriched the potash content is increased uh, uh, up to 2.8 to 3.5 percent. Uh, same for the uh, calcium and magnesium the total calcium in case of the conventional vermicompost 0.5 to 0.8 percent and with microbial enrichment it is 1.5 to 2 percent and with the rock enriched it is significant improvement of 7 to 8 percent. For the magnesium it is a conventional vermicompost 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 percent with the microbial enrichment 0 0.6 to 0.8 percent and with the rock enriched it is around 1.2 to 2.3 percent. So, the rock minerals and the microbial inoculations so they can be mixed together for a preparation of a enriched vermicompost. The if you see the available nutrients uh, uh, at the end of the composting periods when you go for the mature comp compost harvesting see the available nutrients in case available nitrogen for the conventional vermicompost is around 103 and some cases we have seen that is also increasing uh, the, um, the different uh, replication different uh, combinations. So, up increase 1, 3, 2, 6 ppm 
and the microbial enrichment the there is a uh, good improvement 1600 to uh, 1700 ppm and, and for this rock enriched so this remains around 705 to 1500 ppm of the nitrogen whereas you see the uh, olson phosphorus or you can say available phosphorus for the conventional vermicompost is around 900 to 1087 ppm and for the microbial enriched it is 900 to 1125 ppm whereas you go for the rock enriched uh, rock use of rock phosphate the available phosphorus with the proper dose if you go for the higher dose so that decreases but we use drug phosphate around 20 percent the available phosphorus around 1165 to 1444 ppm. Similarly, ammonium acetate using the mica by using mica you can increase the available ammonium acetate for the conventional vermicompost is around 250 to 3330 ppm uh, with the microbial enrichment it is higher 4320 to 5230 ppm. And whereas with the rock uh, NH4320 it can increase up to 9274 ppm the micro the um, use of mica and this is the chemical properties if you see a biological properties of the uh, uh, enriched vermicompost uh, compared with the conventional vermicompost there is urease activity and acid phosphatase activity we have seen for the conventional vermicompost urease activity that is a uh, microgram ammonium per gram per hour so this uh, ammonium release from this conventional vermicompost as you say 80 to 90 whereas the microbial enriched so the higher activity of the, my, the uh, microbes that is 120 to 130 and rock enriched 116 to 130. Similarly, the acid phosphatase activity for this uh, conventional vermicompost this is around 158 to 172 this increased to 200 to 255 for the microbial enriched basic and for the rock enriched it is 216 to 222. So, that means the with addition of the microbes that increases the activity of microbes which ultimately help in the nutrient release pattern uh, or the availability of uh, nutrient in the vermicompost itself and also this can be helpful when applied to the uh, soil they can help a better soil mineralizations and the better availability or the quicker availability of nutrient to the crops for meeting the, uh, the need of the crop. So, uh, there are some, so as you see the there definitely the conventional vermicompost has a higher uh, the nutritional quality contents as compared to the uh, um, sorry uh, the enriched vermicompost has a higher nutritional content as compared to the conventional vermicompost. So, there is a marketing tip. So, how can go for the marketing? Suppose we are discussing the, uh, we will be discussing a cost analysis for a small or marginal farmer. So, you can going for the uh, production of vermicompost on for his own consumption actually. Uh, we can see what is the um, return we can get if it goes on selling the vermicompost. But when you go for marketing, so to market vermicompost for the uh, top, top value the product must be uniform actually and the consistence and the reproducible. That means, very consistent and reproducible and uniform quality so that the consumers can you can build a trust among the consumers, among the farmers. Uh, if you for the regular supply of your produce is the same the principle of the any market. So, if you are meeting the demand of the crops and you have a consistent supply and if the quality is maintained and the, the supply is consistent and the also the quality is the, you know, consistent and reproducible then the there will be demand. So, the second do not think compost as the only end product especially for the uh, vermicomposting organic farming. So, uh, we, we, we do not think that okay, we, we can pro provide the compost that is that is the job is done no. So, usually we have to uh, target the consumers or you can say the understand the growers what the growers demand what the growers needs and their expectations. The growers actually the farmers as, as being uh, if you if you think of farmer suppose you become a farmer what I need suppose I am growing rice crop I need a compost which is suitable for rice crop. So, that I can have a better productions at the same time I can make the quality is also uh, better with the minimizing the cost of productions also. Similarly, if you are growing a vegetable farmers I, I am growing potato or I am growing cabbage or I am growing cauliflowers. So, I need a compost that that is fitting to requirement of the crop because compost for the potato and the compost quality for the uh, tomato or the cabbage may not be same. Potato is a crop which require more of phosphorus and more of potash. So, we need to supply compost that is rich in phosphorus and potash so that it can it can maintain the, the amount of production the quantity of productions at the same time by improving the quality and uh, so that uh, the uh, the if you meet the customers uh, uh, expectations or the growers expectations what they need then we can make production if you go for the marketing skills we can produce the compost in such a way. So, you can meet the target growers the target growers demands can be fulfilled then there is a continuous supply chain. 
So, the producers, so if you see the model of uh, this loaded from the uh, Nepal, that is a marketing channel of uh, and the market volume of Burmese company Nepal, as you say, the producer and the consumers. So, mostly they link 80, 85 percent of their production that goes to consumer linking and only rest 15 percent either to traders and the cooperative. So, there is a direct contact with the, so Burmese composting, you have the direct contact with the producer and the consumer, that means the, the farmers. So, farmer is the uh, the end users or the beneficiaries. So, if you have the target the farmers, a group of farmers and you can imagine, you can visualize, conceptualize what is, what is the need of the farmers. So, which crop they are growing and for that crop they are growing rice growers, rice farmers or they are the vegetable growers, the vegetable growers so what type of vegetable they are growing and for those farmers what type of compost is needed. So, can you make enrichment, can you enrich the vermi compost? in the production can you enhance the quality so that it can directly meet the requirement of the farmer. So, if you, if you think the one, so marketing will be much easier and this supply chain will be also much smooth. So, if this is the um, from the uh, as, as once your the compost is ready, then you go for the business scale, then order taking. So, you can take orders by any media either phone calls or the email message or uh, that is the order taking process. So, you can by print media as a, you can you can take the orders from different agencies depending upon the requirements. So, that depends upon the how channel you are making which the consumers, which growers you are targeting based on that you can you can have the order from uh, uh, for, for different type of the compost or the compost person. Then accordingly depending upon the order the type of compost you have different quality then go for the packing. Packing is a breathable back means the so that is a vermi compost live materials. So, there are microbes you can you should not use a airtight containers should not be used. The containers, the bags we are using, that is a perforated or the aeration, this is a proper aeration, so that the compost is a live materials, is a healthy materials, a live material, life is there. So, you should, uh, you should, you should provide the, uh, the packing material, you should have the proper aerations. Then you can have a, this is the primary package you can say, as you are making packing and the, this is one of the box, you can see here box, this is a secondary package. So, in a, in a box, we are putting the uh, number of uh, um, packets and also you can have the tertiary package, similar boxes can be put in a in a um, in a containers and finally this can be transported to the uh, growers and uh, when you uh, when you go for the marketing uh, uh, sending to the um, um, the growers or the, uh, the customers then you have proper labeling of the vermi compost uh, so that is very very important uh, as for the marketing so the product should be named as the name of the product should be given the name of the uh, product what you are giving the vermi compost or the, the product can be given uh, and the logo of the company as the um, producers, so you have the certified company, the logo should be provided. The composition of product is very, very important, the main compositions whether the macronutrients or the micronutrients as you contain specific enzymes or the hormones or the uh, my, microbial biomass uh, community. So, those compositions should be given on the, um, uh, on the, lab, uh, the labels and the crop specific suitability, it is very, very essential to specify the suitability of the compost for a specific group of crops. It may be specific for cereals or maybe pulses or oil seeds or vegetables for which type of crop it is most suitable. So, if, if, if um, so, this could be specified on the uh, cover of this uh, compost the labeling. Then usage de details, the quantity of use for which crop and what is the quantity, the volume of the, the quantity of the use for the as kg per hectare or the ton per hectare that can be specified. Specific action. So, after application what happens, what are the uh, enhancement, what are the changes in the soil fertility, changes the, the growers can expect. So, that specific action that can be given and finally, the manufacturing and expiring date. So, these are the labeling process. So, when you go for the composting, these labels should be provided uh, for this uh, uh, in the compost bag. Or, uh, compost. Then we will go for the same uh, sample cost analysis of vermi compost and uh, uh, we will discuss for a small farmer, usually the uh, small farmers the land size is 2 hectares or two, small to medium farmers 2 to 5 or maximum 5 hectares of land size. For a small farmer he can go for the organic farming, right. So, uh, if you can take 10 beds, 10 beds and uh, the vermi compost the matured period is 60 days. So, in a year, so that means 2 months uh, one uh, the vermi compost set can be matured. So, in a year you can have the 6 cycles, when, means, means 2 months 1 cycle of vermi compost can be ready and in a year 12 months. So, we will have the 6 cycles in a year. So, uh, we will uh, give the cost analysis for um, 10 beds. So, if you see the 10 beds per fixed, there is a fixed cost construction of bed. 
if you go for the earthing of uh, or the bricks and cement. So, the cemented structure of the beds, bed size as we discussed earlier same bed size, each bed size is uh, 10 feet 10 to 12 feet length, 3 to 4 feet uh, width and 1.5 to 2 feet depth. So, for this uh, bed size single bed size you can go for the 10 beds the construction cost is around uh, 10,000. And the cost of uh, construction of shed means uh, also shed materials means we are putting here the asbestos materials for providing the cover to the beds. The cost of construction of shed materials is around 40,000. Cost of machinery and the implements uh, uh, as you are using for the mixing of the vermicompost or the shredding for the cutting of the vermicompost to the small, uh, small pieces and the sieving uh, um, operation. So, that is we have taken only 20,000 cost of machinery. And cost of irrigation facilities, when you go for the vermicompost, you will provide the irrigation, sprinkler irrigations for the regular uh, irrigating or uh, maintaining the moisture content uh, in the compost bed that we have kept as 30,000. So, total cost is 100,000 that means 1 lakh for 10 beds. So, that remains a fixed cost that is only construction cost of the vermicompost. Uh, so, 10 beds is around 100,000 that is 1 lakh. And if you see the um, variable cost. So, this is the, the uh, variable cost uh, for the uh, 10 beds. First, we take the organic waste, we have taken the uh, 9 tons, 9 tons means uh, 1 5 ton on based on the uh, dry weight basis, we have taken almost 1 5 ton uh, 150 kg per, per bed, uh, 1.5 quintal for 10 beds uh, that is uh, uh, 150 kg per bed. Uh, that, that means 1.5 quintal for 10 beds that is a 15 quintals okay. and for the 6 cycles and that is around 9000 kg for the 1 year if you are using the organic waste that comes 9000 kg uh, in a cycle of 6 cycles and for 10 beds and the cost of this materials around 2 to 50 rupees and the cow dung we are using around 4500 kg cow dung for this 6 cycles and the cost of cow dung is also 2250 rupees. Earthworm that is uh, 20 kg per cycle 2 kg per bed and uh, that is uh, for 10 beds 20 kg for initial uh, uh, release of earthworm we need this for the, the bed the kg cost is around 650 rupees. So, for the 20 kg cost of earthworm is 13,000 rupees. And the fungus culture if you see fungus culture that is 30 liters we are using the 300 rupees and labor we have kept 180 labors in a year of 365 days. Uh, so, around the 30 labors per each cycle 10 beds need 30 labor per each cycle that includes your the uh, loading or the cutting of the waste materials, loading in the bed and maintenance of the moisture, temperature in the bed, harvesting, after harvesting separation of earthworm, drying and packaging. So, the uh, 180 labors for the 10 beds, around 36,000 is the labor cost, we have kept 200 rupees uh, per labor. As uh, the, you have kept uh, because the usually the farm, uh, the Labors, uh, farm family person that are em, they are employed in uh, doing the job. Electricity we have kept three thousand rupees uh, in per annum, and packaging charge uh, only for the packaging materials we have kept around two hundred fifty rupees, and other expenses kept fifteen hundred rupees. So total variable cost for the ten beds it comes around fifty eight thousand five hundred forty rupees for the first year. And if you go for the second year, so all the cost remains same except uh, the earthworm because uh, the earthworm that is generated from the first cycle, these earthworm can be used for the second uh, for the uh, second cycle also. So here the um, only one cycle earthworm cost is used. The uh, the, uh, the same earthworm is multiplied, and also you can sell earthworm regularly. So there is no cost of earthworm involved. So, this from second year onwards this variable cost is 45,540 and if you see the return uh, vermicompost almost we produce 9 tons 
in a year from 10 beds in 6 cycles. And the cost of vermicompost uh, the, uh, the selling price if you uh, calculate the 10 rupees a kilo for 1 ton around, so around 10,000 rupees is for this conventional vermicompost. If you think of the enriched vermicompost which uh, we, where we need to add either the rock phosphate or the rock minerals or the microbial inoculants if you add theirs. Uh, the, the cost or uh, the selling price of the energy vermicompost is rupees 15 per kilo and per ton is around rupees 15,000 is taken as the uh, cost of the uh, energy vermicompost. So, rupees 10,000 for the conventional vermicompost and rupees 15,000 for the energy vermicompost per ton of the produce. So, here if you have taken the conventional vermicompost, so as a 9 ton, so 10,000 per ton, so 9 tons around 90,000 the income from the vermicompost selling. Also, we have the vermi wash that can be produced around 300 liters and the return from the vermi wash can be uh, 3600 rupees for 300 liters. And earthworm also we can sell 50 kg earthworm we can um, it can be available from this uh, in 1 years and uh, 20 kg uh, 20 kg is used that is that is uh, every time we use 20 kg and additional 50 kg earthworm is there. So, that can that is uh, that can be uh, also if return uh, earthworm cost is around 650 rupees a kilo. So, that comes around 35,000. So, total return uh, comes around 1,28,600 for a uh, conventional vermicompost of 10 beds in one year. Uh, if you see the uh, cost and return of conventional vermicompost, so for the year 1, we have the fixed cost that is your constructions materials that is around 1 lakh and this is the variable cost of the first year 58,540. So, because of the you have the uh, earthworm cost initially involved there. So, total cost comes around 1 lakh 58,540 in the first year and total return is 1 lakh 28,600. Uh, so, first year we have a negative return that is a law that is a 29,940 because the construction cost the fixed cost is involved there. If we go to year 2, so there is no fixed cost. So, only variable cost is there. So, that is your the uh, 45,540 that remains constant from, from year 2 onwards and your total cost is uh, the same as your variable cost and total return is same 1,28,600 and here you have the benefit the second year around uh, 83,000. So, and also from second year, third year onwards, onwards. So, you can, the farmer can get around 84,000 of the benefit from second year onwards. And if you go for the uh, uh, enriched vermicompost, where the fixed cost remain 1 lakh, that is constant, and variable cost here we are, we are so in addition to the if you see the conventional vermicompost, there is variable cost is higher, this 62,000. 140, this is because of the natural rock minerals. So, around 3600 is added here for the cost of the natural rock minerals, either you can use rock phosphate or the dolomite or the mica that is added for the uh, 10 beds and in, in each cycle also, it comes around 3600. So, if you add this one, the total cost is around 162,140. And the total return here, uh, as we discussed earlier, if you if you go this one, uh, total return is it, 90,000 for this uh, conventional vermicompost. And if you go for the enriched vermicompost, the vermicompost will be 15,000 per ton. If the 9 ton, this comes around 1,35,000 return. And the total return increases here using this uh, uh, enriched vermicompost. So, total return comes around 1,73,600 for the enriched vermicompost, but if you see the conventional vermicompost, the total return is uh, 1,28,600. So, this has the higher return uh, 1,73,600 and net return is uh, in the first year only 11,460. In case of the conventional, we had a loss first year. First year, we are the payback period, we, we are not getting any return, rather there is a loss in case of the conventional vermicompost. Uh, whereas, in this one compost we get around 12,000 uh, net benefit in first year. 
to go to year 2. Uh, uh, so, here uh, year 2 uh, think that here because earth form cost is not there, the cost is uh, around 49,140 and this total cost is uh, 49,140 and the return remains constant for year after years and here the net return is uh, 124,460 uh, same for the year 3 and same for year uh, on, onwards. So, uh, that means uh, if you go for the uh, uh, enriched vermicompost, so your net return is around 1,25,000 in span of 12 months uh, for, the, for the size of the 10 beds. In the farmers especially for the uh, small farmers or the medium farmers having 2 hectare of land area, if he does not want to use the, but if somebody goes for the marketing, this is the value of marketing. But the farmers usually for the uh, small and medium farmers, they used to use the compost for their own consumption for the own field. So, the production is around 9 tons per hectare. So, 9 tons per hectare means if you see uh, it can it can meet the requirement of uh, 2 hectare of farmlands, uh, we can use the 9 tons per hectare. And here uh, the farmers need not sell as is using vermicompost on his own field and only the cost involved is here or the, the variable cost as you see each year and here he can sell only the earthworm. If you see the earthworm price, uh, the earthworm uh, cost is around 35,000. So, each year he can he can get around 35,000 rupees per year uh, through selling of the earthworm and the vermicompost he can use for his own field can be applied and this say this is the return he can get and by if you if you do, will discuss the other classes uh, when you go for the applying the vermicompost the uh, the rate of applications and the year of application how with the years we can minimize the use of the uh, because initially you may require the high dose of vermicompost to meet the requirement of the crop as we proceed over the years then the uh, vermicompost dose can be reduced uh, because with the because this has a residual effect the build up effect uh, as you go on adding every years. So, there is a residual, residual and the nutrient availability also increases over the years because the soil has the um, organic matter pool that is a stabilized organic matter pool that gets builds, builds up over the years and once this, the soils stabilized organic matter pool that is built that is settled then the requirement of the burning compost can be minimized and um, however, the, the um, soil can meet the nutrient requirement of the crop can be supplied from the soil once the stabilized organic matter that is built up. So, it takes some time in case of uh, uh, composting and in this case the farmers uh, can have the 10 beds and he can uh, produce, he is produced from this uh, 10 beds can be utilized for the own crops can meet the requirement of the crops and the as he is not uh, buying the vermicompost from the outside only his farm resources can be utilized the cost of production can be brought down. This also discussed in the uh, latter classes, latter classes in the input managements in the crops. So, with this I can say that, so there is a scope, so there is a opportunity. So, we can we can completely depend upon the organic fertilizers, we can eliminate the use of the chemical pesticides or the chemical fertilizers while meeting the required productions in a sustainable environment. Thank you all.